Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have three rather splendid bottles in front of me. They, they, they're rather nicely packaged, these, uh, from a Grosse Wein, uh, which, yes, probably does mean big wine. Uh, it's a winery in Bergenland, and... Um, I mean, the Blau Frankish is, the, is at the heart of these, so the first two of them are 100% Blau Frankish, uh, and the last one sees a Blau Frankish being joined with uh, Zweigelt, uh, and, uh, and Zweigelt's a, a grape that uh, I think it's Blau Frankish crossed with St. Laurel. Oh, anyway, if it's not, uh, slap me around the wrists and call me a kipper, uh, but with uh, other grapes in there, Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah and Merlot. Um, so I think I've got them in the right order. Let's just dig in and see where we get to. So this first one um, is uh, the Grosse Wein, uh, Blau Frankish uh, from 2012. Uh, give it a whirl. Now I like Blau Frankish as a grape, particularly when they make it like this. Um, it's a it's a grape that uh, some there's bits of it that sometimes can be a bit re reminiscent of Cabernet Sauvignon. So it can do stern and oaked, uh, but. Um, for me, I, think that, I mean, this one, I don't know whether it's been uh, too near near barrels. Or I, anyway, I, I'll, yeah, there'll be some way where you can find out a bit more about the wines. But what I like here is this, this wildness, this like untamed character. And I don't usually get that with the uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. And it feels like there's, the, there's this juiciness and richness of fruit, uh, but with other things going on as well. So there is an undercurrent of something of the soil there. And uh, there's this uh, yeah, wild, sort of slightly savoury, meaty character. Oh, the sort of wine you want to glug heartily. Um, it's got um, it's got freshness. I think that's one of the most important things. Freshness isn't the thing you notice first, though. It's this juiciness and bold, plummy berry fruit. Bit of black currant in there. Uh, some herbs. And yeah, this uh, undercurrent of a, of a slight a soil character that's uh, that's just framing it slightly. Um, and. Um, Sometimes you can taste ed edges of limestone. I don't know whether there's limestone coming through in the um, in, in the soil here, but um, uh, all I know is that it's one of those which has got this um, yes juicy, rich flavours, but fresh finish, and it feels unhampered by oak. One of those that you want to glug, and it's it's come out of a quite cool cellar, and at this temperature, it's looking looking rather smart. Let's see um, what about the next one. I think I'm doing this the right way because. This is called Blau Frankish, the same as the previous one, but Blau Frankish vom Riegel. So uh, sounds like a more precise uh, definition of a, a particular village or vineyard even. As I say, there'll be some sort of way of finding out uh, a little bit more about the wines uh, on the, the website or my website or their website or some website. Now this smells like the previous one has been uh, told to polish up because it's going to a party. Uh, so it's got this same uh, rich, juicy fruit, so that plum, the berry, uh, but it feels like it's, um, it's had a wash, uh, put on a suit, uh, in which it looks reasonably comfortable. It's, it's, sometimes uh, you, you have wi uh, wines that, uh, that you put them in a suit of oak and it, feels, it looks a bit awkward and geeky and gawky. But here it's scrubbed up nice. Um, so you've got this softer, smoother, rounder, um, uh, well, aromas certainly. Uh, it's not oaky by any means. Um, and, um, but it, it just feels like it's going to have a richer flavour. Let's see what difference in alcohol. 13 and a half. Um, 13 and a half, both the same, but um, uh, but it, it smells like it's good. Yeah, it's a bit more, slightly more grown up than the previous one. Yeah, and when you come to taste it, that's when you notice uh, more of the oak. So there's, there's that tan in there. And I was talking about getting them out of a, a coolish cellar. Um, and part of the uh, uh, part of me thinks that yes, you should have it, have it warmer, so I don't notice that slightly chewy edge of the tannin. But also, part of me thinks actually this is the right temperature absolutely at which to have it because otherwise that fruit might just get a little bit too uh, wobbly. Um, I think it just needs a little bit more time. I, what I prefer to do is shove it in a glass and or shove it in a decanter and give it a couple of hours and I think that oak will just sort of it's lose its grip and it'll still be there but it won't be quite as uh, dominant and forceful as it is now. Dominant and forceful sounds like it's dominating the wine, it's not at all. Um, the fruit is still the main event. Maybe a little bit more savoury tomato character coming through here than in the previous one. Uh, but um, I like them both. Probably wine for wine. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I like that. I like the first one. Uh, I, maybe that's the wine for now and this one is the wine for uh, a couple of years' time. Final one, Rot Cuvée. So this is the one that's got Zweigelt and um, Blau Frankish in with the, what was it, Cabernet, Syrah and Merlot. Let's give this one a whirl. 
And uh, a couple of things I notice here. I don't notice that bounce and uh, feistiness of Blau Frankish. Uh, and also I, I, I notice oak character a little bit more. Uh, this for me feels like a wine that um, is probably a little better behaved than the, 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 the ones that are pure Blau Frankish. Uh, but maybe has it lost something as a result of having those uh, slightly more uh, sedate and stern international varieties in there? Uh, maybe Syrah's not on the sedate and stern side, but those two Bordeaux grapes, uh, the Merlot and the Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Bordeaux is so serious, isn't it? Um, so uh, here, I'll be interested to see what it tastes like. Rich, jet, round, jound and roosy, round and juicy. Um, there is this plumminess again. I think that's the Blau Frankish that's, that, that's talking there. Um, I, I, I think about what the other grapes are bringing to the party. Um, Zweigelt, I think of it as being quite fresh. Sometimes Zweigelt reminds me of uh, Dolcetto or uh, Gamay. Um, and uh, but then you put in Syrah, Merlot, and Cabernet Sauvignon, which are probably a little bit uh, weightier grapes. Um, I think it's, it, it, for me, it's the youngest tasting of these. It, it's the one that really does need the, uh, the time to come out of its shell. Um, and maybe it's the one that's had uh, longest in oak. I'm, I'm really not sure. Uh, as I say, you'll be able to find out, blah, blah, blah. Um, but um, I, I, I don't know, I like the young and young and you know, the tigger like one. Um, I, I, all of them are good, uh, and I do like the presentations, and particularly their, their litre bottles. So, uh, uh, so you have to find another friend, you understand, rather than uh, a fewer number of you finishing off the bottle. I hope you realise that. Uh, but um, yeah, good set of three wines, and um, I, um, I'm taking them to, uh, to show to a few people uh, this evening. So I will report back on how they go down, because uh, they don't see too many Austrian red wines, and I think they'll come as a pleasant surprise came as a pleasant surprise to me. See you soon.